Good afternoon, dear teachers. Welcome to One More Email. So good to have you all here. If this is the first time here with us, I'm Katia Valli, Schools and Exams Marketing Manager, and I'm talking to you from Cambridge, Cambridge's office, Brazil, in Sao Paulo. What about you? Where are you joining from? Can you send the place you join from in the chat box, please? Wow, we have people from Brazil. We have people from Ecuador. Countryside of Sao Paulo. Hello, Carolina. So nice to see you all here, guys. Please do keep joining us and sending your messages. This week, we have been running a series of webinars. If we can go to the next slide, please. You will see two QR codes. On the left of your screen, you have a QR code that directs you to our Cambridge Brazil YouTube channel, where you will find all the recordings of past webinars. And on the right, you will have the links to enroll for future webinars. Tomorrow, we are having a webinar at four o'clock and on Friday, a webinar with Herbert Purta at three o'clock. So do take a look uh, at these webinars because they are really worth watching. I invite you also to follow us on social media. You have here in Cambridge, Brazil, right? We are in Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn with several updates. A little bit of housekeeping before we begin. By the end of this presentation, we will have time for questions. So please send your questions in the Q&A tool. This helps us organize better the questions. By the end, in the chat box, you will see a link for a feedback form. And from the form, you will be able to download your certificate. All these webinars, including this one, are being recorded. And that recording will be uploaded onto Cambridge Brazil YouTube channel. Today, we have the honor and the privilege, privilege, privilege of having Dan Vincent with us. He is the author of Own It and Shape It by Cambridge University Press and Assessment. Dan has taught English for over 20 years in the UK, Japan, Ukraine, and Spain. He has studied materials development for endangered languages and has written a range of several materials, including Own It and Shape It, as I told you. He's currently back in his hometown, London, teaching English at St. Giles International. Welcome, Dan. Hello. It's a moment. There we are. Oh, Hi, everyone. Hi. Thank How are you? I'm good. What about you? I'm very well. I'm joining you from uh, quite a rainy London. It's been raining all day today. Um, really? So, so Paulo is not <laughs> much different. It's about the same oh, really? here. Too. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very okay. much for accepting our webinar invitation. And Thank I you. hand over to you. Have a good presentation, everyone. Thank you, Katya. Yeah, hi, good evening, everyone, uh, or good afternoon for you. Um, yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, it's really exciting to be able to do a webinar uh, with people who uh, are using the course that we wrote a few years ago. Um, I'll be referring to it as Own It and Shape It uh, variously throughout the course, but it's, it's the same course. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, using Own It and or Shape It to explore global citizenship. So. Let's have a look at, uh, let me just move on, what we're going to uh, do in this webinar. So first of all, we'll have a look at what is global citizenship. We'll look at a definition. Uh, then what is global citizenship education? Um, and I'll ask you uh, to give a little bit of input there. Um, and then we're going to look at um, framework for how to approach uh, global citizenship in class with the materials. Uh, and how we can go from the personal to the global. 
Then I've got some ideas for class, which are based on different uh, sections, different units of the various course books. Um, we'll look at, am I a good global citizen? Uh, something called Both of Us, Let's Get Involved, about volunteering uh, on the move, about um, journeys and migration, and then one about the environment. Um, when we've done that, we'll look at um, some ways to ensure that the activities that we do in class uh, remain respectful and there'll be time for Q&A at the end. So um, I'm sure you all have a, uh, an idea of what global citizenship is. It's, it's built into many of our education systems now. It's quite a widely used term. Um, and there are various definitions out there, but the one I've chosen for this webinar um, to look at is the United Nations uh, definition. And the United Nations states that global citizenship is the umbrella term for social, political, environmental, and economic actions of globally minded individuals and communities on a worldwide scale. The term can refer to the belief that individuals are members of multiple, diverse, local and non-local networks rather than single actors affecting isolated societies, which I think can be summed up by saying everybody is connected to everybody else. So the concept of global citizenship itself is embedded in the Sustainable Development Goals, which are a series of goals uh, developed by the United Nations to uh, bring people out of poverty, uh, to make equitable, equitable uh, access to education uh, by 2030. And that's um, this one, Sustainable Development Goal 4, which is ensuring inclusive and quality education for all and uh, promoting lifelong learning which includes global citizenship as one of its targets. Now it says that by 2030, the international community has agreed to ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including global citizenship. Um, that's not very far away, but if we think of 2030, um, at the students we're teaching now, uh, many of them will be coming of age within the next few years. So it's it really uh, brings home how uh, important it is for us to be bringing elements of this into our own lessons with the students that we're teaching now. That's global citizenship, but what about, uh, what do you think? I'd like you just to type into the chat um, some qualities that you think make a good global citizenship. And I'll open the chat so I can see what you come up with. Um, you can think about yourself. Are you a good global citizen? You can think about the kind of qualities you're trying to uh, help your students develop. Uh, or you can think more generally. Okay, uh, so let me have a look to see what's coming. But respect has come through from Adriana. Uh, humble as well. Diversity. I'll let these run for a moment. Uh, collaboration. Excellent. Yeah, these are all the kind of things that I think I would come up with. Critical thinking from Andretza. Hello to everyone, and by the way, who's joining and it's nice to see that you're joining from so many different places um being supportive definitely um respect again yeah respect i think is one of the key uh concepts um and respect is is fundamental for being a good citizen and a good student uh when working with others friendly definitely uh let's see if some others come it always takes a little while for the the chat box things to work uh inclusion Empathy, definitely empathy. We're going to look at an activity later which helps to develop a little bit our students' empathy for others, uh, particularly empathy for people they, they might not know, but they have something in common with. Uh, yeah, we can definitely consider the, the Palestinian people among the global citizenship. Um, and I think we should definitely have empathy for them. Um, let's see what else is coming. Compassion. Uh, yes, I think that ties into the previous comment about the Palestinian people. A big heart. Yeah, I'm going to let these keep coming while we move on. I'm sure you've got many other ideas. Uh, I'd like to look at what is global citizenship education in itself. And this time I'm going to look at UNESCO um, and see what they say about global citizenship. Now, they say it entails four areas, uh, which are... Um, instilling values that reflect the vision of the world and provide purpose, such as respect for diversity, empathy, open-mindedness, justice, and fairness for everyone. Adopting behaviours to act on their values and beliefs, 
participating actively in society to solve global, national and local challenges and strive for the collective good. Um, adjusting curricula and content of the lessons, provide knowledge about the world and the interconnected uh, nature of contemporary challenges and threats. And then a uh, fourth one, nurturing cognitive, social and other skills to put the knowledge into practice and to make it relevant to learners' realities. I'm going to use this uh, as a structure for my webinar today. So we're going to look at different activities that can come under these different headings. But before we do that, I'd like to look at a framework. How can we think very generally about uh, global citizenship, how we can uh, help develop it in class and how we can and use the materials in Oni and shape it and your own materials to help our students develop as global citizens. So um, this is my idea. I think it's very simple. You've probably seen similar things elsewhere, but it's really to start with the personal, to start with the students. Uh, what do they know? Uh, what experience do they already have of whatever topic it might be? Um, I think it's always important to start with the student because for them it will be uh, more concrete, but also building on what they already know uh, or what experience they already have helps to build confidence. Um, it shows that we um, are not taking a top-down approach. We are encouraging the students to, to kind of involve themselves, but also it makes it easier then to move outwards as we look at a more global scale. So I would always encourage um, starting with the students themselves, their immediate experience, um, their, their own feelings, their own knowledge, um, and their own um, ideas about whatever topic it is in question. From there, you can move to the local. And by local, uh, it could just be the neighborhood, it could be a local community, uh, a village, a town, uh, a region, um, or it could be um, a, an online community, even if, if that feels uh, local to the particular students. From there, we can move to national uh, level, uh, get students to think about their own country, um, what's happening in terms of the environment, in terms of migration, in terms of uh, international cooperation or whatever it might be. And then from there, we can go global and think more globally. Um, so we start with what the students really know about themselves. Then we move out to what they know or they feel about their local communities, their local areas, then about their country. And then lastly, more globally, uh, this step-by-step -step process should help structure a class. But the important thing is then to make some connections between the personal and the global and the global and the personal. And I'm going to show you some ways I think you can do this in class as we move through the activities. So let's get on with the activities. So uh, ideas for class. Um, first, let's look at that UNESCO criteria about instilling values that reflect the vision of the world and provide purpose, uh, such as uh, respect for diversity, empathy, open-mindedness, justice, and fairness for everyone. Okay. So the first one I've got here is, am I a good citizen or am I a good global citizen? Um, and I think there are lots of places in the book where you can uh, take materials and use them as a springboard to kind of explore this topic. I've chosen uh, level three, unit eight, um, which has amongst the CLIL pages, um, a section on citizenship. So citizenship as a school subject, as a CLIL subject. <clears throat> and here the students read about Montessori schools and they learn about how those schools and that school system, that education system, helps to develop students. So starting with this, I would do the, the page as it is in the book. So this is a kind of lead in getting students to think about citizenship uh, generally and looking at an example of how one particular education system does it. But then from there, I would move on to uh, a set of, kind of discussion activities to get students thinking more. Starting with the personal, how does our school help us to become better citizen? You could ask them to think about the content of different subjects and lessons, school rules and student responsibilities, and anything with extracurricular activities to get them to think about how uh, what they do in school, what they learn, um, helps them in terms of developing their citizenship skills. From there, they can think about the local. Again, that could be their local town or region or community. How can we use what we learn in school to become better members of our local community? And then from there, the national. Uh, how can being a good member of our local community help improve our country? 
how can we use what we learn in school to become better citizens? For I just wanted to say that for the sake of today's webinar, I've used um, our local community, our region, country, and so on. But obviously, you would could use the specific names of the town or the city, uh, or you would use Brazil. Um, although I saw there were some from Ecuador as well, so you could use Ecuador um, to be more specific. Once they've had a chance to think about that, they can move on to thinking more globally. And um, any kind of activity where students have to put things in order and they have to work with a partner to decide what order to put things in, it's really good for discussion. And it brings out a lot of English because they have to agree and disagree and give their reasons uh, for their choices. So here, I've chosen how necessary are these things for being a good global citizen. Work with a partner to put them in order, one to seven, with number one as the most necessary. Uh, working or studying with people from different countries, having respect for people with different beliefs, traveling and exploring other countries and cultures, having respect for the environment, taking an active role in helping to solve issues, for example, through volunteering, speaking other languages, and having respect for people of different genders and sexualities. So students will decide uh, the order for these. I've, def I've ch put the wording quite carefully with number one as the most necessary, uh, rather than saying from most to least necessary, because I don't want to suggest or for you to suggest to the students that any of these are unnecessary. We're looking at uh, all of them being necessary, but maybe some have more priority. There's no right or wrong answer in these activities. It's purely to get students thinking and discussing. And then you can do some feedback with them. So we've gone through personal, local, national, global <clears throat> in terms of citizenship. How do we make it connected to between personal and global? <clears throat> I think here, just a simple question, which personal qualities experience do you have uh, that make you a good global citizen? So they can think about um, from what they've, they've talked about on the global level and perhaps thinking back to what they've done in school and trying to make some connections between the two. Some will find this easier than others. Uh, some may um, may not have so much to say, but even if we just um, stimulate some thought and if they can do it in English, I think that's all to the good. If you do want to grade the language, I haven't graded the language particularly for these activities as I don't know uh, your students and your classes, you may wish to make the language much simpler or you may, may, make to wish, it, may wish to make it a bit more complex if the students are of a higher level. But if you do want to grade it, um, you can do a very simple activity where you give questions, for example, why is it important to be a good global citizen? And then a sentence then. It's important because are you a good global citizen? And they can choose I'm a bad, okay, good or great global citizen because, and how can you become a better global citizen? I can. And they can think of ways to finish those sentences. So you can give them some language structure as well. Um, and I, I think uh, it's interesting to see what students come up with. I've taught teenagers uh, and, and young learners quite a lot, um, most recently in Spain. Um, and they often, um, even if they don't necessarily want to say, or they're not necessarily capable of saying exactly what they want to say in English, many of them do have ideas that they want to share about different topics to do with what's going on in the world. Okay. Um, this is a similar uh, topic. This is in level four, unit seven, where students look at Danish schools and they look at uh, the system of education there, which encourages a lot of collaboration. I'm just gonna pick out a few pieces from the text to focus on. So here in the text, we learn, for example, that when there are problems, everyone bears in mind the feelings of others and avoids criticizing anyone. The group tries to find a solution together. They do this in a peaceful environment with everyone glad to take part. So you could get students to think about how similar or different that is to how problems are resolved in their, in your schools. And then a, a later part of the text talks about how students with different strengths and weaknesses study together in mixed groups. This helps to develop their empathy by showing them that everyone has strong points, talents, and positive qualities. One student might find English difficult, for example, but be good at math. Another might find English easy, but find it difficult to understand math. In a Danish school, these two students would help each other in class and often between classes as well. And then I think the key sentence here is uh, the system develops teamwork, respect and collaboration. So they can use this and compare with their own schools to see um, if they think they do that, maybe not in the same way, um, but uh, possibly uh, with the same results. 
here you can get them to think on a personal level how far do you agree with these statements and they can put one two three or four so the statements are quite straightforward and i think should be concrete enough for students to to think about i work well with other people on school projects i have empathy for people in difficult situations i respect people with different views and beliefs to mine i'm good at finding creative solutions to problems and i enjoy learning about different cultures and way, ways of life so you can encourage them to think about those and whether they agree or disagree. Perhaps they can compare with their partner. Um, then thinking a bit more broadly with the local and national, what challenges is my local community or town or city facing? What challenges is my country facing? And how well are people working together to overcome these challenges? So again, a focus on collaboration, which is a key part of, of citizenship. And then moving on to global, uh, they can think more about how can international respect and collaboration help tackle these issues. So I've chosen the climate crisis, the dangers of artificial intelligence and possibly future pandemics, but fingers crossed uh, there won't be. Um, and then also to think about how a lack of respect or collaboration makes those problems worse. So again, they're now thinking on a global level. Um, these are all discussion uh, kind of questions and it might be a bit tricky for them to do all of this in English, I would encourage students to do as much of it as they can in English. Um, they may want to write their answers down before they, they, they talk about them so they have some time to prepare and write. Um, but you know your students best in that respect. Moving from there, connecting the personal to the global. Um, these personal qualities are all useful for becoming a good global citizen with a partner. Put them in order one to six with one as the most important. So another ranking uh, activity where they choose the uh, the uh, order they think is best. I put being creative, working well with others, being patient, uh, respecting differences, being fair and being open-minded. Once they do they've done that, they can think about themselves. Which of the qualities do you have? Which ones would you like to develop more? So we've gone kind of full circle from the personal to the global and then hopefully back to the personal. Okay, uh, let's look at one called Both of Us. This is from level one, unit three. And this is, uh, I think, quite a simple activity for students at this very basic level. Um, I'm just going to move my little screen of myself there because I'm in the way. Um, so I would really encourage you uh, to use the pictures on the opening pages for discussion, uh, for uh, a lead into different classes. So on all of the units throughout the course, I mean, the pictures, we chose them very carefully. Uh, we chose them to be interesting and kind of quite uh, striking and hopefully will get students interested. So I really encourage you to make use of them. And there are different ways you can do that. Here, we've got one of a school, a lesson taking place outside. Um, students can describe what they see, but then they can talk about, um, probably they'll just see many differences to their own school, but you can encourage them to say uh, what is similar to their experience of school. So it might be that, um, for example, there's one teacher and they also have one teacher in the class. Uh, the teacher is standing at the board, the students are sitting down. Um, it might be that the students are wearing uniform. Encouraging them to find the similarities can begin to develop empathy. Um, and I really encourage you to use the pictures as visual input as well. Then later in this unit, they uh, in the Around the World pages, they read about a boy called Hideki from a school in Japan. Uh, I lived quite a long while in Japan and I taught in schools and the school day there is, is very different, at least to the the, the school day in the United Kingdom, where I come from, just to give a couple of examples, at the end of every day, every single day from primary school through secondary school, uh, students clean the school. And I don't mean they just put their chairs under the desk. They clean the floors, they clean the windows, they wipe the desks. Uh, sometimes they, um, uh, they clean the corridor floors, for example. It's, uh, they make sure there's no litter. It's a fundamental part of the day that there is school cleaning. Also at lunchtime, students eat in their classrooms. They um, they serve the food themselves uh, and then they clean up the dishes themselves as well, which I think is very different to how we do things in the United Kingdom. So there's lots of differences and it's very interesting for students to learn those. So here's a concrete kind of uh, text about the school day in Japan. Once they've done that, I would get them to start thinking about their own school experience. Um, so here, which part of your school day is your favorite? 
I haven't asked which part of school is your favorite because I know students tend to say they dislike school, but get into the focus on the school. So uh, the things they actually do, the times that they do them and so on, uh, which part is the most tiring? Do you do the same things at school every day? And imagine you can change one thing about your school day. What do you change? Um, this is kind of a, would normally be a second conditional sentence. Imagine you could change one thing. What would you change? But just by phrasing it like that um, in the present, um, you can get students talking about the same things. Once they've done that, uh, they can think a bit more locally and nationally. So are all schools in your city the same? Uh, what are some of the differences? And are the differences good or bad? So they may know something about different kinds of schools. I'm sure they do. They may have family who are studying in a different kind of school to their own, um, or they may have seen them on TV. Um, and they can begin to compare their school experience with other school experiences locally and nationally. And then when it comes to the global view, um, like I would recommend they work with a partner and they can choose a country they're interested in, get them to find out information about schools in that country and find out is the school day similar or different to your school. This part I think they can do in their own language, um, as long as when they come back to prepare a presentation, the presentation is done in in the English that they're capable of. Um, if they can do it in English, fantastic. But um, as long as the output is in English, I think I think we're fine. Once they've done that and they've done a kind of presentation, uh, uh, in order to connect the personal to the global, I would suggest this, that with their partner, the one that they did the presentation with, pardon me, they do a role play. One of the students plays himself or herself, that student A, and student A pretends to be a student from the country in the presentation. So let's say they've looked up, um, I don't know, schools in Romania. One of the students uh, is himself or herself, the other pretends to be a student from Romania, and they simply ask and answer questions. In your school, do you wear a uniform? What time do you finish? Uh, how often do you have a break? Uh, can you go home for lunch? Uh, do you have to uh, leave your books in the school? whatever kind of question it is, okay? So they've already got the answers to those questions from the research they did. They can ask and answer questions with quite straightforward English. And then they just complete these sentence stems. We both, um, uh, we both start early. Uh, we, both have to, we both have to eat lunch at school. We both have to wear a uniform. Uh, we, can both, uh, we can both bring our mobile phones, whatever it might be. So they begin to make connections between the people, the students in other countries and their own life. It's a very simple thing, but it gets them to start to think again about common ground and similarities. And I think that really helps develop empathy, um, which again is part of being a global citizen. Okay, let's move on to adopting behaviors to act on their values and beliefs. Um, here, participating actively in society to solve global, national and local challenges and strive for the collective good. I think at the level that we're thinking and the ages that we're thinking, probably the, the most uh, easily understandable thing is volunteering. So I've got an activity called uh, Let's Get Involved. This is based on level two, unit four, uh, the social studies project, where um, they, they plan um, a poster uh, for a volunteer organization to help with a problem in their community. Your community needs you. So they see a model um, and then they, they do some work around that. And then they come up with their own idea for a, uh, for a volunteer project and they develop a poster based on that. So this can be a real problem in their community or a real issue they think needs dealing with. So I would work on the project uh, as it is. But also, um, let's have a look. Again, personalize it. Have you ever volunteered? What did you do? Which of these volunteer activities would you most like to do? So I've just chosen helping at a residence for older people, keep local parks and beaches clean, coach sports for younger children, help at an animal shelter. But you may know of other opportunities that are relevant to, to your areas that you can add. Oops, let me move on. And then locally and nationally, I would encourage them to find out about two or three local or national organizations that interest them and prepare a short presentation. So they should include information about what the organizations are trying to do, how they are doing it, and how young people can get involved. And again, they might find that, in, that uh, information in their own language, uh, or they may find it in English, 
but the presentation needs to be in English. And then they can list, give their presentation, then listen to their classmates' presentations and decide which ones they would be most interested in joining. So they're beginning to think about actually things that they might one day be able to do. Um, and then there are lots of international organizations uh, that they can look at. So for the global section, they can research, I would say, just one international organization working in one of these areas, protecting animals, helping children, protecting the environment. You might change that list or add to it. Uh, they can make a fact file of the, uh, of the organization with very basic information and share it with their classmates. So they're, they're learning about what is actually going on regionally, nationally, globally. Um, and this is all uh, will give them a kind of insight into the problems that are happening around the world and how different people are uh, dealing with them, but also how they can get involved. And then so I'll move that over there for the discussion. Um, again, kind of linking the two, uh, then they can maybe think about how international organizations help small local communities. Maybe they can find concrete examples in the information they find online, um, but they can think about that. And then how can individuals make a difference globally? And it can be simply from, if they understand that uh, kind of local problems feed into global problems, they'll, they hopefully will see that helping locally can have a kind of ripple effect that hopefully will help with larger global problems, particularly with things such as the environment, because that really does include all of us. Okay. Uh, here's uh, just to add here at level three, unit one, is a very similar thing. This is an around the world about a boy from Sierra Leone, really interesting boy, Kelvin Doe, who uh, set up a radio station and I think developed a kind of uh, very cheap light bulb device for his community a really interesting young man. Um, you can use this as well as that lead-in to volunteer activities. Make sure, by the way, that you do the projects. Uh, you can see here, uh, it's about, it's in the project pages. I think in Own It, it appears in the book and in Shape It, it's, it's separate, I'm not entirely sure. And here, students working groups, think of a problem in your community or country, find information about it, and then they can think of, uh, uh, possible ways to solve that so they're thinking really actually thinking about real life issues um and hopefully they'll take inspiration from people like kelvin kelvin Dunn. okay adjusting curriculum and content of lessons okay um this is uh, to provide knowledge about the world and the interconnected nature of contemporary challenges and threats um there are lots of texts i think that lend themselves to, to talking about global citizenship, about global issues. But I'm just going to look at two. This one in level two, um, students look at something called the Oregon Trail, uh, which was um, when lots of people in the 1840s and 1860s, or particularly 1843 and 1869, uh, left the uh, eastern United States and went west with everything they had with their families uh, in search of gold but fundamentally in search of a better life. So this lends itself, I think, to talking about migration. Um, you can start with this page, work through the activities, look at the example of the Oregon Trail, um, and then moving on from that, we can begin to get students to think about movement, movement of people. So we'll start with a very simple, straightforward, personal uh, idea. Have you ever made a long journey? Why and how did you make it? How long was it? How did you feel? So some very concrete personal experience. And then thinking locally, do you know anyone who has moved from a different part of your of the country to yours? Or do you know anyone who has moved from your part of the country to another? Why did they do this? So they're beginning to think of reasons why people might move. Uh, it could be from work, it could be for love, um, whatever the reason might be, um, of why people move from one place to another. And from there, thinking nationally, but also beginning to think internationally, why do some people decide to move to, to your country? And how easy or difficult do you think it is for them? They can think about things like language, cultural differences, uh, finding work. And number six, uh, when people from your country move abroad, where do they usually go and why do they move? So they're thinking about immigration and emigration. And again, what kind of problems might a person or a family have when they move from one country to another? And then moving on to globally, um, 
I think we can talk about migration concretely. Migration happens around the world and for different reasons. Some people become refugees. So looking at this issue, why might a person become a refugee? Um, and they can think about that. You can talk about that. They may wish to look at some examples of famous refugees. Um, I've got Albert Einstein, Malala, and one for, who moved to the UK from Somalia, from Somalia um, uh, Mo Farah. Um, they may know refugees. Uh, they may know people who have uh, immigrated, migrated to their country, or they may, people, may know people who have uh, immigrated. So they may have very concrete examples of their own. Um, and then to connect the personal to the global, I suggest a kind of letter writing activity. So they can choose one of these situations. Uh, imagine you have recently left this country to go and live in another one, and you've been there for three months, or you've recently moved from another country to come and live in this one, and you've been here for three months. Write a letter to your family back home to tell them about your new experiences, including any challenges or achievements. So they're putting themselves in the shoes of someone who has done that, building on everything that's come before, all of the things they've talked about in the previous uh, kind of discussion questions. Um, and of course, they will write the letter in English, um, but really getting them to kind of empathize, hopefully, or, or with some of the challenges and difficulties um, and achievements when people uh, migrate or indeed become a refugee. OK, uh, the environment is another issue, of course, that uh, uh, is very urgent and students will probably have things to say about that. In level three of unit five, I am not going to talk forever. I'm going to ask you to join in soon. Um, in level three of unit five, there's a really nice text uh, about the Nenet people uh, of Siberia, who are a nomadic people who go from place to place. They herd reindeer, and the text is about how uh, climate change is affecting their traditional lifestyle. So they can read about this as a kind of introduction to uh, uh, thinking about the environment, but with a kind of concrete focus on, on the Nenet people. Uh, and then once they've done that, they could look at the project that goes with it. Again, on the project pages or the project book. Uh, this is a culture project where they look at, they can find out information about another group. So I think I've, yeah. Here they work in groups, choose a tribal nation suffering from climate change, then complete these various steps. So this is a kind of general introduction you can use in, with the book, but again, you can use it as a springboard for uh, more discussion and more activity about the environment. And I would do that like this. Uh, again, start with the personal. I think I've made that clear. What do you know about these environmental issues? So start with what the students know. Climate change, the use of plastic, animals in danger of extinction. You may wish to add to that list. So what do they already know? Building on that, thinking locally and nationally, which environmental issues does my community or town or city or region or our country face? And what are people doing to solve these issues? Um, I'm sure, sadly, there are lots of different issues in everybody's region, in everybody's country, um, and I'm sure a lot is being done to solve them, and I'm sure more could be done. So it'd be interesting to see what students have to say about that. In thinking more globally, what are the biggest environmental issues in the world today? And do you think we can solve these issues? Why or why not? Uh, I found in Spain students were quite pessimistic about the environment. Um, um, not unreasonably, but hopefully uh, students will answer that these problems can be solved and then try and think about how that might be. And of course, uh, kind of global collaboration, collaboration between countries is essential, but also individual actions, as well as kind of actions on the part of, of local and national governments are also really important. So this ties in uh, very well, I think, with the need for global citizenship. So to connect the personal to the global, very simply, with a partner, make a list of small things you can do to help tackle environmental issues. So hopefully they'll they'll see the connection between uh, their own lives and, and the global effect that their actions can have. OK, so um, I've gone through several ideas and I've talked quite a lot. Um, hopefully you, you would try some of those ideas in class. So I'd just like to see if any of them interest you. Uh, if you could type into the chat which ones you're going to try, um, just type the numbers. So number one, for am I a good global citizen? We looked at the Montessori uh, schools and the uh, Danish children and and how they um, how they do, do with deal with citizenship. Both of us, which is comparing school days, 
let's get involved, which is the volunteering and looking at how different organizations tackle issues and how young people can get involved. Uh, on the move, which is about migration and, and uh, being a refugee. And the last one about the environment and me. Okay, okay, got different numbers. You're welcome to try more than one. Hopefully um, it'll give you an idea of how you can come up with your own ideas as well. Okay, okay, good mix, I can see. Uh, number one is there a few times, number three, uh, they're coming through. I'll just take a peep at the uh, earlier entries on the chat to see what other words you came up with. If I can, or maybe I can't get back that far. Okay, uh, great. Um, obviously, the the things I prepared for the class are just to give you an idea of how these can be done. The webinar is going to be recorded so you can refer back later to see the questions and answers that I use, but you'll see that they largely depend on discussion as well as occasional role play. Um, and there was some letter writing. But hopefully the general idea of, of leading from the personal to the global and then connecting the two has come through. Okay, great, great. Um, different ones there. I'm sure also that in other subjects, uh, not only English, uh, the global citizenship is, is dealt with in different ways. But I really think as language teachers, uh, we are really well placed to to kind of develop these skills because so much of what we do is based on communication, getting people to talk to each other, to share ideas, uh, et cetera. Um, so I think we are um, in some ways uh, are lucky that we can do so much. Okay, let me just move on to the last one, which was nurturing cognitive, social and other skills to put the knowledge into practice and make it relevant to learners' abilities. Okay, now this is slightly different because I think this uh, is much more, uh, it's built into the course more generally. Um, the course, uh, another name for the course, it, it's only in shape it, but it's also collaborate is a different name for the course um, in Spain. And I, I, there's a lot of collaboration um, at, or activities where students can develop collaboration uh, in, in the course. And that's part of the Cambridge Life Competency Framework, which you may already know. Um, so I'm just going to read through uh, read through this. I'll just give you, a, no, I'll read through it with you. So often referred to as 21st century skills, life competencies include the knowledge, skills and attitudes we need to participate effectively in the world around us and to fulfill our potential in our education, our careers and our lives in general. We require the ability to be able to work well with other people even when they're in other parts of the world. We need to be good at communicating our ideas and opinions, whether that's speaking up in small meetings or writing posts to millions of readers. We need the creativity to generate new ideas and the imagination to find solutions to problems. It's also important that we can separate facts from opinion and evaluate the reliability of information we hear and from there construct persuasive arguments. We need to be experts at learning. We will be challenged to learn new skills throughout our lives. We must be able to better understand how our actions impact on others in our society and in, our, in the world around us. And we need to strengthen our ability to manage our emotions, persevere in the face of adversity, and believe in our own ability to succeed. So I'm just going to pick out a few phrases from that text. So you can see it talks about the knowledge, skills, and attitudes we need to participate effectively in the world around us. Participate in the world around us includes being good citizens and being good global citizens. Working well with other people, uh, that's collaboration. And there are lots of areas in the course where you can get students to develop their collaborative skills. Uh, to be good at communicating our ideas and opinions. Um, being a good communicator involves not just being able to use the, the vocabulary and the grammar well, but being able to listen actively, being able to um, make your arguments clear, uh, knowing um, how to be persuasive, knowing what kind of language to use in different situations. Uh, the creativity to generate new ideas and the imagination to find solutions to problems. So creative thinking. And then separating facts from opinion and evaluating the reliability of information we hear and from there constructing persuasive arguments. Digital literacy, which I think is really key um, and becoming more important in the world. Experts at learning, uh, becoming better at learning to learn, becoming more autonomous learners. And finally, uh, this is global citizenship, I think, in a nutshell, better understanding how our actions impact on others in our society and in the world around us. So 
the Cambridge Life Competency Framework really includes the core competencies that we need and the, the course builds them in. Um, and I just want to focus just on one, and that's in the project pages. And in the project pages, um, so you have the project, you have a model, you have different language activities, but you also have the how-to sections. So for example, here in level two, unit six, is how to work in groups. So there's a little activity where students listen to uh, three young people, John, Issa, and Poppy, talking about um, uh, how, which way of working works well for them. So they have a little activity where they listen and they match people. And then a discussion activity where they talk about which of the ways of working do you think is best. So they actually focus on the skill of collaboration in itself um, in this page. And then later when they come to doing their own project, there's always an opportunity for them to put that skill into practice. So here they've talked about how to work in groups uh, and here they're going to decide how your group will work together. So they've looked at different ways of working together. Now they can decide together which way they think is going to be best for them in this particular project. Um, so this is really core that that kind of cognitive, social and other skills that UNESCO talked about is here very concretely. Just one more example. Um, here is the citizenship project uh, in level three and the how to here is how to make decisions in a group. So here they have the stages of making decision, which they put in order. Again, they focus on it, uh, they actually look at it and then later they have um, an opportunity to put that into practice when they come to the project themselves. They decide at various stages, they have to make a decision, decide why your school is special, decide what responsibilities students will have and decide who prepares each part of the brochure. So they look at how to make a decision in a group and they make a decision in a group. So I really, really encourage you to, if you do the projects, really make sure that you, you do these how-to sections and that will help develop some of those skills that we looked at earlier in the UNESCO uh, criteria. Okay, finally, uh, keeping it respectful. Some of the discussions I've talked about being personal quite a lot, asking students what they think, what their, uh, what their experiences are of different things. Um, this might be sensitive for some students. Uh, some students may not wish to talk about certain things, um, has the possibility to get heated. Some topics can be quite controversial. So I think whenever we do these kind of uh, activities in class, we need to have some ground rules. So just some very simple rules here that I think it's worth um, uh, going through with your students. First of all, listen without interrupting. Uh, let the person speak. That's a really basic skill, um, especially when someone is perhaps taking time to say what they want to say in English. Listening without interrupting is, is, is really crucial. That goes for the teacher as well as the students. Also, listen actively. So don't, um, many people just wait for their turn to speak. They don't really listen to what the other person is speaking. So listen actively is paying attention to what the person is speak, saying uh, and thinking about how you might respond or thinking about what, what, what you're learning, but not just uh, waiting for your turn. This is really key, respond to ideas, not individuals. You might agree with someone's opinion, you might agree with and disagree with an idea that they've come up with, but if so, your disagreement is with the idea and you don't want to, uh, you might find an idea slightly ridiculous, but you don't want to call the person ridiculous. Um, you want to respond to uh, their opinion, their idea, but not to them as a person. So avoid uh, ad hominem attacks. Um, and that's a really key skill, I think, in life and, and quite tricky sometimes, but worth reminding students uh, of when we do these activities. Use polite language to disagree. This is language you can give them in English. For example, I don't really agree or um, that's not quite how I see it or um, I have a slightly different idea, whatever it might be. Um, disagreement needs to be polite to make sure that things remain respectful. Let everyone speak. Everyone needs the opportunity to speak um, in a group um, or even in, the, in pair work, really. But don't make people speak if they don't want to. Again, uh, bear in mind that some topics might be sensitive for some students and they may not wish to talk about it or they may just be shy uh, about, about speaking. And that's perfectly okay. 
So I would use those as, as kind of key ground rules when doing these activities. Uh, okay, so in summary, I would say use the Around the World and the project pages in particular as springboards for discussion. Do the pages as they are in the book and the extra materials you have uh, that go with the course, but use them to a, for a much wider discussion um, that can lead to students exploring global citizenship. Build from students' personal lives and experience, and then making links with local and regional issues before taking the discussion global. And encourage students to link the personal to the global or the global to the personal. And finally, ensure discussions are respectful. So, uh, yes, that's it. I've talked quite a lot. I'm aware of that. Thank you for your patience in listening. I hope you found some useful ideas in there. And I'm ready to take some questions. Sure. Thank you so much, Dan. Such a, an important topic to bring for discussion. And thanks very much for all the ideas that you shared. Come on, teachers. Let's ask them some questions. We have time for that. Should I open the chat? Okay. Yeah. You're welcome, everyone. I, I really think it's a good course for, for opening up discussion. And I'm aware that Maybe the students don't have always the necessary language, um, but I think you can simplify language uh, and students are still able to express themselves with simple language, even about quite complex topics sometimes. Sure. In your opinion then, what would you mm. say is the biggest challenge uh, when you, you want to bring global citizen development into the classroom? Um, I really think it's 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 making it relevant to students. I think when you're a teenager, or even when you're an adult, sometimes you're very focused on your your personal life, what's happening immediately around you. You might watch the news, you might know what's going on. We're all aware of the environmental issues, but sometimes it can seem very distant and very abstract. So I think anything that helps students to connect their life with with wider issues um, is really helpful, and that that can be a challenge which is why I tried to build it from the personal to the through the local to the to the global. You might not reach the global stage, but even to get students just to think about their own community, their own town, their own region um, is a step in the right direction, even if you, you don't follow it through to the, the whole section, the whole stage, I think. Great approach. Yes, I agree with you. All um, right. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, Dad. Sorry. Oh, no, no, that's fine. I'm just there. Thank you to people too. I, see. I, I imagine um, also, I don't know how it is in, in, I know not everyone who's joined today is from Brazil, but I imagine, uh, as in many as kind of uh, education systems at the moment, global citizenship, development, sustainability, all those are issues that we need to be addressing. Um, and I do think we're very well placed as language teachers to, to, to bring them into the class because there are so many texts we can read and then talk about, and because we really want our students to be talking to each other, sharing ideas, asking each other questions, getting to know each other. So all of these skills, uh, collaboration, learning to learn, citizenship, developing empathy, uh, I, I really think it's a great place to do it in the language classroom. Exactly. We are very lucky to be language teachers, right? Because we can, work with so many things, of yeah. course, besides language. Definitely. All right. So I don't think that there are questions today okay. then. So in the chat, we have the link for the feedback, as we told you at the beginning. Remember that from the feedback form, you get access to download your certificate you will need to include your name in the certificate. All right, so I thank you very much then for being today with us. Really thank interesting you very much for the invitation. Thank and you. looking forward to seeing you in more webinars. Thank yes. you very much teachers you. for your participation. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.